Welcome to Concepts of Programming Languages with Professor Califf. Today I'd like to talk about ambiguous programming languages, how to recognize them, why it matters, and what we might do to fix them. How we recognize ambiguity is to look at the parse trees that a grammar produces. So if a grammar can produce at least two distinct, two different parse trees for the same sentence, then that grammar is ambiguous. So here's an example of an ambiguous grammar, similar to what we were looking at in the parse tree video. Let's consider what that looks like. Let's prove that it's ambiguous. So I'm going to use the sentence A minus B minus C. If we look at the grammar and the sentence, we'll see that we can get two different parse trees here. We can take the root expression. In either case, we're going to break that into an expression minus an expression. But then we have a choice. We could take the first expression and turn that into an identifier. The second expression then would become expression minus expression. Or we could take the first of the expressions and do the expression minus expression. And then the second one we would turn into the identifier. Now you might think, does it really matter? I mean, they don't look that different, but let's see. Let's suppose that we have values for these and we want to use these interpretations of the sentence to compute the value of the expression. In the first case, the left child expression would be value six because it's just the A. And the rightmost expression in that blue tree will be two because that's four minus two. So then the value of the entire expression is going to be 4, 6 minus 2. Then for the second tree, the left expression is going to be 2 for 6 minus 4. And then the right expression will be 2 again, but it's 2 because c is 2. That makes the overall expression value be 0 for 2 minus 2. So we have the exact same sentence but our grammar allows it to be interpreted in two very different ways that get very different results. For a programming language, that's a problem. We have similar kinds of issues when we think about precedence. The grammar that we have doesn't provide any way to distinguish and tell what the precedence should be of the operators. So both of these trees are valid trees for A plus B times C. Yet again, they get different results because in one case we do the multiplication first as we would expect, but the one that does the addition first is perfectly valid. So when we're creating grammars for things like this, we need to be considering the order of operations. And there are two concerns that we have. The first of those is associativity. So for most operators, we work from left to right. So we call those left associative operators. Those would be things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, so forth. The majority of operators that we're familiar with and use regularly. However, we also do have to worry about right to left operators, things that are right associative. Examples of that would be things like assignment or exponentiation. For example, if we say A is assigned B is assigned C is assigned 2, the intent of that is that we're going to assign 2 to C, that gives us a result of 2. We assign that same value to B, which gives us the value as a result, and then we assign the 2 to the A. So we need to be aware of our operator associativity and make sure that we write our grammar to support that. Then we also have the concern of precedence, which operators should be done first. That will also need to influence our grammar construction. So let's look at our two trees. Which of these is correct? If we look at this, we want to do A minus B first because we normally work left to right. So the correct grammar is the one on the left. So we want to modify our grammar to force it to produce that one. So here's what we might do. We're going to only recurse on the left. That way we have to compute everything on the left before we do the thing on the right. This will guarantee that we do all of the operations on the left before we get to the one on the right. 
So we've added another non-terminal here to handle the right-hand side. Now notice that if we put the parentheses down in that factor, that's because we need to be able to get to the parentheses on either side because we should be able to use parentheses to get a more complex expression wherever we want one. Putting the parentheses down inside the factor will allow us to do that. And there, of course, we get all the way back up to the full expression because we can put any expression we want inside the parentheses. If we do this, there's only one possible tree for a minus b minus c, and it's the one we want. For a plus b times c, we also have only one tree possible at this point, but it's wrong because we're working from left to right and we want to do the multiplication first, even though it's on the right. So we need to do a little more fixing of our grammar. So what we're going to do is we're going to force higher precedence down the tree. So just like we put the parentheses down in the factor, we're going to create another non-terminal that handles multiplication. So we can't do multiplication up at the same level as addition and subtraction. So if we have this grammar, our tree gets a little more complex again, but we do end up with the result that we want. So with this grammar, we would still do the two subtractions from left to right, but we're going to do the multiplication first and then do the addition. This is one way for us to approach resolving this problem of ambiguity. Now there is another very common problem that we'll see in programming languages in terms of ambiguity. And that happens in if statements. So if we think about an if statement where we might have just an if, or we might allow for an if else, this would be a really common way for us to write that grammar. But it turns out that this is ambiguous. If I have if condition one, and then that's going to if condition two, do statement one, else statement two, we could actually interpret that either of two ways because the else could attach to the first if or to the second if. So both of these parse trees would be valid according to our grammar. This is called the dangling else problem. If we have this simple grammar, then we haven't specified which if the else should match with. Programming languages handle this problem in a variety of different ways. Many of them, including some you may be familiar with, such as Java, C, C++, automatically match to the most recent if. Some avoid the problem syntactically. So in Python, it's actually not possible to create a dangling else because you have to indent in a way that shows what the intent is. So I hope that this has given you some idea of what's going on with ambiguity in programming languages what we might do with grammars to avoid it, and what some of the common issues that we'll see if we write sort of simple grammars to try to do certain programming kinds of constructs. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.